Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave and Family Farm. Today I want to do a slightly different video here. I have a Case International Maxim brochure. It's an original uh, sales brochure from the 5200 series. Uh, 5220, 5230, 5240, and 5250 uh, were the models that this covered. My wife had gotten me a model tractor, like a small toy tractor. And uh, when we got it, the gentleman, it was off eBay, the gentleman that sent the tractor also sent this brochure for free, which I thought was really cool. So I enjoy these kind of videos, seeing the old sales brochures. And obviously this tractor is from the 90s, so it's not, you know, like a 50s Farmall HRM or something like that. But I still find it kind of cool. So I stole my wife's art desk here <laughs> to try and get a little bit of an angle on the brochure for you guys to check it out. So we're going to look at this brochure, but uh, I also want to do some uh, shout outs today. Um, there are some folks that have either helped me out or uh, are continuous supporters of the channel, you know, between commenting and liking and uh, just interaction on the channel. So I don't normally do shout outs um, and it's not because I, I don't want to recognize anybody. It's just because I always feel like if I do some shout outs that uh, I'm going to leave somebody out and, you know, it's not my intention to... Uh, you know, hurt anybody's feelings or um, intentionally leave anybody out and leave them thinking, well, okay, he doesn't like my channel or I'm not good enough for a shout out or things like that. Like, I just don't want to create any negative environment for everybody. But uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now. And there's there's some people, like I said, that have either helped me out or continuously support the channel and they deserve recognition for that. So the shout outs today we'll do. Um, they're not everybody. So we'll have to do a separate video to continue on uh, with them. But we'll start. Uh, I think I have uh, 15 on the list here today that we'll start with. So let's get into this brochure here. Like I said, these tractors um, were from the uh, mid-90s. Uh, the 5100 series had come out first. I'm just going to kind of flip through here and uh, show you some of the pages, some of the different models. I'm not really going to read through any of this stuff, but uh, if there's anything um, that you guys you know, wanted to pause the video and read, uh, read about, uh, you're more than welcome to you know, of course, to do that. But, uh, whoops, I just hit you guys in the head. But here's just some of the uh, different things. You know, they have the loaders, like I said, the different models. And uh, Case had made some of their own equipment for a while. Uh, you know, they had the inline baler and some of the, the hay binds and things like that. Here, uh, there's a manure spreader. I'm not sure that I've ever seen uh, a Case manure spreader uh, before. So uh, this would have been a time before Case and New Holland merged together. So the, these were not technically CNH uh, tractors. Um, so that uh, that's kind of neat too. But uh, here we'll see. I got to keep tapping my screen here. But here's some information on the uh, the engines. They were Cummins engines in them. Some of them were turbocharged, some of them were, wouldn't, or weren't, excuse me. Uh, so here's the big guy, the 5250. This is the largest of the 5200 series here. Uh, you can see the torque that that puts out. Um, that has uh, the 5.9 Cummins with the turbocharged engine in it. The 5220, which was the smallest in the series. And when I mean biggest and smallest, they're actually all the same exact size tractor. Uh, but uh, they had different horsepowers. And of course, there's different transmissions available as well. But uh, the 5220 has a four-cylinder uh, I guess it, that might be a case engine. I'm not sure if that was a Cummins or not. I think it was, but I'm not sure. They call it a case engine in here. It was a 3.9 liter uh, on the 5220, and then everything up above that um, was a, the 359 inch or cubic inch 5.9. They call that a, ca a case engine too, but it's a Cummins. So I'm pretty sure that four cylinder was a Cummins too. Um, but uh, these tractors have power shift available, uh, shift packs, or you can get, uh, here's the, um, 
The synchro transmission would have two levers that look the same. That would be your range lever and that's your transmission lever. And then when you come to the power shift, that's still your range lever. But now instead of having to shift through four gears uh, using the clutch, you've got just a one, two, three, four power shift. So this is what my tractors are, uh, are the power shift. On the mountains around here, that uh, is, is super helpful because if you're on the road, for example, I spend a lot of time on the road. If you're heading up the mountain and you need a downshift and you got a heavy load behind you, if you had the synchro transmission, by the time you put the clutch in and move that gear lever to a lower gear, you've done almost stopped on the side of the mountain. So <laughs> it's nice to be able to just click the power shift back and keep going. So um, these tractors had 16 forward uh, gears and 12 reverse gears. Didn't matter which transmission you went with, whether you know, it was the synchro or the power shift, they had the same amount of gears and you know a creeper was available i think the top road speed on these originally was about 18 miles an hour uh the 5200 series added a neutral position on the hydraulic shuttle lever the 5100 series does not um, you can kind of see it here uh, the neutral position the 5100 series just has the forward and reverse so that was one of the big changes i guess you could say they made to the 5200 series uh, when they came out with it um, so you don't have to uh, clutch you can just kind of because you've got that ne neutral position you can go forward reverse uh, without uh, clutching so if you had a loader on it and different things it makes it nice and then of course they added uh the three-point hitch buttons in the back there to work the three-point hitch. Um, so that was kind of nice too. Um, and then uh, all your controls, the way these tractors are laid out, uh, they have a nice console on the side of them here with all your uh, levers, throttle, rear remotes, PTO lever, all kinds of three-point hitch uh, adjustments, draft control, things like that. Um, it has a category two hitch uh, with up to 7,700 pounds of lift capacity. It is a dual PTO. So you have 540 or 1,000. There's just like a, uh, kind of like a big snap ring. You pop out, flip the shaft over, shove it back in, put the ring back in. And uh, you've, you've, that's as easy as it is to switch between 540 and 1,000. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, this is a little bit about the loader here. Uh, of course, four-wheel drive, just push of a button on the four-wheel drive, has a diff lock. Uh, I don't know much about the loaders because none of my Maxims have loaders on them. So I can't tell you much about that. Uh, one nice thing about these tractors is that they have, um, this is actually the frame of the tractor itself. So the engine sits in here and then the loader, uh, you know, bolts to it, has a, a big heavy duty frame on it. A lot of the newer tractors um, don't have that. They use uh, the engine sort of as the, I guess, frame or support for the tractor. So these were a nice heavy tractor and, you know, we're able to uh, withstand some pretty good loads because of that heavy duty frame. So, and there is a big, I don't know if that whole thing, oh, whole thing's not going to fit in the uh, picture there. But uh, this is basically a kind of a breakdown of uh, all the different options and things that uh, were on the tractor. This is pretty cool here. Uh, shows just the different gears and stuff. Um, so... And then they had some uh, loader attachments here that you could get. And then that was a quick attach loader, easy to take on and off. You could get a 72, 84, or 96 inch wide bucket to go on there. And then here's uh, the cab. There was some different displays available for the cab. Uh, this one down here is just your, your more basic uh, display kind of with needles uh, for the gauges and stuff like that and then they have some that are a little bit more digital with some buttons in the middle you can change some of the functions that are on the screen and there's even another uh, screen that's different than that one that i don't see here um, but this is what i was talking about here with the layout 
uh, of the controls. Everything's nice. So most people, uh, you know, turn to the right as they're looking behind them to work on implements. So that puts everything conveniently to the right uh, of you. Um, to me, it was a, a pretty innovative tractor for its time. Um, they came out in 1990, the 5100 series did, which looks identical there on the inside. So I thought that was a fairly innovative uh, design. Um, of course, it came with either cab or open station. Um, the ROPs on the open station did fold down, which was pretty cool. Just a couple bolts. You know, you could put front weights on there, four wheel drive, some different mirror options, rear wiper. The steering wheel is telescopic and tips up and down. Here's a picture of uh, 5230 open station. You know, you could get the canopy with some lights and things on there front fenders, all kind of, you know, typical options of tractors, but, and then they did have a high clearance option. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these, uh, anywhere, but they did make this, uh, high clearance option, puts a taller tire on there. Uh, you could go 46 inch or 54 inch rear tires and 36 or 42 inch fronts. So that boosted you up a little bit. They're pretty narrow tire. Um, but again, I haven't really seen any of those. I don't know if anybody else has anywhere. And then this talks about the maintenance a little bit. Super, super easy stuff on here. Of course, your fuel tank, you can fill from the ground. Uh, fuse panel, there's two of them on either side of the, well, one of them is actually right here and the other one's on the other side of the steering column. Plastic cover, you pop it right off. Um, there is actually a rear fuel tank fill um, as well. Engine oil is right on the side for filling and checking. Uh, everything is super easy on these tractors. And one thing I really liked about these, again, that, you know, back for its time was quite innovative. It was super easy to service everything. There's two side panels that pop off really easy. There's just two little handles you turn and the side panel comes off and then the hood flips right up out of the way. Uh, no bolts, you know, wrenches, anything required for that. Uh, air filters in the front, super easy. Oh, here you go. Here's a picture of just removing the side panels, super easy. You did not have to remove any side panels to check the oil. And then there was a uh, kind of a jump port uh you don't have to there's a plastic cover for the battery box you don't have to take the uh, cover off and access the batteries if you needed to jump uh the tractor uh, they have that port there for you so that was pretty cool and uh, here's just some stuff about some of the equipment just you know some more details um about the uh the equipment some of the optional stuff oil pan heater block heater you could up the alternator um oh you could go with a downswept exhaust i don't think i've ever seen a tractor one of these that had uh didn't have the stack coming out the top that would be something different so then yeah there's the different uh instrumentation panels and then rops and cab you know it has air seat all that kind of stuff the weir wiper kit uh different mirrors horn um but yeah all kinds of different options and things that you can get with the tractor so again you can pause that and read that if you want so we'll kind of keep moving but so here's the 5220 the pto horsepower on that was 80. um i don't think it says what the engine horsepower was but i think it was somewhere around 89 or 88 horsepower i think is what it was but again it doesn't say that here 5230 uh, that uh, PTO horsepower uh, is uh, 90 PTO horse. Of course, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Maybe I mentioned that already. The 5240 is 100 PTO horsepower. Um, I have two 5140s, which are the same horsepower. I think it was like 110 or so was the engine horsepower. Uh, something like that, I believe. I remember reading somewhere but the pto horse is 100 on those my one uh, open station has been turned up so it puts out a lot more than that you almost can't stop that tractor and then the 5250 uh, has 112 uh, pto horsepower so uh, again you know if you wanted to uh, 
check out some of these specs and things you can. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, I don't think there's a date on this, but it must have just been from the mid 90s. But I thought it was pretty cool. This is one of my favorite uh, series of tractors, the 5000 series of 51s and 5200. So anyway, pretty cool. So uh, I've burned up enough time here with this. But uh, so anyway, I wanted to do some shout outs here today and uh, give some recognition. The first one is Woods Tree Farm. Um, he is uh, a friend of mine. And um, after we had the building collapse, uh, geez, it was pretty quick after. Uh, and we found out the insurance wasn't covering the collapse of the building. He put together a GoFundMe right away for us. We had no idea that he was doing it. Uh, I didn't know till he, uh, I think he sent me a link on Facebook. Um, so we really appreciated that. Uh, that was so nice of him to step up and do that to help try and raise some money, uh, you know, to offset the cost of that building. Um, as of now, I did get a check from the insurance company for all the equipment damage, but of course, uh, you know, no check for the building damage. So uh, anything we can get from that GoFundMe will be a great help in, in replacing, actually we're gonna try and re, you know, repair the building. So um, Walsh Farms, uh, he's a newer supporter of mine, but wanted to give him a shout out because he does a Farm Truck Friday uh, video in uh, which they, um, he kind of does a prayer time for um, different channels, uh, people that, uh, People that are in need, uh, you know, just need a little extra support. And uh, we were included in a couple of those Farm Truck Fridays there. And I really appreciate that. Uh, just the thoughts and prayers of everybody is a, is a great help for us. So thank you for that. Okay, uh, Rural Life with Ron. I wanted to throw him a shout out. Uh, again, he's a regular supporter of the channel. But... He had done these stickers and asked if any YouTubers wanted them. And of course he sent this nice little card with it. Chris, hope you and your family are doing well. Thanks for the support, helping the channel reach 500 subscribers, Ron Crosley. So I appreciate that, Ron. Um, this is an awesome sticker. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he said his wife uh, actually kind of drew this out and uh, they had it put on some stickers. So that's awesome, I really appreciate that. If anybody else has any stickers that they'd like to send, just let me know. I'm actually thinking of having some made up to send out for free to people if anybody wants one as well. Uh, just didn't get there yet. But if anybody else has a sticker, I'm actually, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put these yet, but I'd like to put them somewhere where they'd be featured on a semi-regular basis uh, in some of the videos. So thank you, Ron, for that. Uh, Jan. Coates. I uh, apologize, Jan, if I mispronounced your last name. Um, he's got a, a really cool channel. He does all sorts of different uh, repairs on uh, just anything and everything. Um, you know, DVD players, tractors. He built himself a uh, camera stand that um, electronically goes up and down. A lot of cool stuff. I believe he's in South Africa. So um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of just different neat stuff on his channel. So check him out. Uh, Farmer Pete, um, he's out, I think in Wisconsin, if I remember correctly. Uh, he's been doing a um, Alice Chalmers WD uh, restoration, as he calls it, <laughs> uh, series uh, that I've been enjoying very much. So if you uh, want to see some some tractor work, of course, in the summertime, you know, he has some uh, bailing videos and tillage videos and things like that. So check him out. Uh, Gerald Farms. Uh, absolutely want to give him a shout out. He and I talk on the phone sometimes. Um, you know, it's it's nice to uh, to have somebody else uh, in the YouTube world to to talk to and <laughs> share concerns about you know, uh, growth of your channel and uh, just different things that are going on. And of course, um, you know, toss any ideas back and forth, uh, repairs and things like that. So make sure you check him out. Uh, John Stevens, Maple Grove Farms. Um, John is out in Minnesota. He does a lot of soil health videos. And of course he does combining and, and hay videos as well. But uh, he, he focuses a lot on soil health. And uh, I, 
urge you to check out his channel if you do any kind of even hobby farming. There's a lot of great information there on uh, building your soil health and he continues to add more videos about that. So make sure you check him out. Uh, My Slice of Heaven uh, used to be called My Slice of Heaven Outdoors. Um, those guys are in the Midwest somewhere. I can't remember the state. I apologize, Joey, for that. But uh, they have a piece of property that they are working uh, very hard on uh, getting it set up the way they want. They planted a bunch of chestnut trees last year. They're hoping to do some more land clearing. He's got a little track loader there. Um, and uh, they're hoping to plant some more chestnut trees and do some uh, culvert work and things like that, drainage work on the property. So be sure to check them out, uh, equipment videos, planting videos, uh, and he does a lot of reviews as well on uh, hunting stuff. So uh, if you're a hunter, uh, you might get some good information there. And of course, uh, Goslin Farms, Ed Goslin. Um, I hope, Ed, that's how you pronounce your last name. I apologize if it's not, uh, but he has been a great supporter of mine and he supports a lot of other channels. I honestly don't know how he gets any work done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Ed. Um, I have enough trouble keeping up with my channel and trying to watch as many other folks as I can. And uh, you seem to be on top of it. And he, he likes to do shout outs to other folks as well. So, um, uh, and of course, he's, he's got some cows. He does some repair videos, some, some bailing videos. Uh, so all, all kinds of stuff there. But he's a, a real, real nice guy and a good person to connect with on YouTube. Um, a newer person that uh, has joined the channel on a regular basis is the Grumpy Farmer. He is up in New York State. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in Northeast Pennsylvania. And he's up in New York State. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, I don't imagine he's more than two or three hours north of me there somewhere. But um, check out his channel. I haven't been watching too long. He just got a newer John Deere tractor. So I'm sure we'll be seeing uh, some videos of that coming out. Uh, he's been selling some corn and things. Um, so be sure to check him out. And of course, um, Mr. Jeff Raymond. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce your last name, Jeff. I apologize. Used to call you Jeff Raymond. And uh, <laughs> then I found out that that wasn't correct. But uh, he is out in Illinois. And he does some, some great videos. Um, you know, just the, the commentary in, in a lot of the videos uh, just, just really hits home and, you know, get, gets you laughing, gets a good chuckle. Uh, they have a lot of nice New Holland equipment. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of field work. He's been hauling corn and soybeans and things now uh, down to St. Louis. Uh, but, uh, good guy. And, uh, yeah, one of the nice things about his channels, for those of you guys who aren't a fan of ads on channels, he doesn't have any ads whatsoever on his channels or on his videos. Um, so be sure to check him out. Uh, hope you're doing well, Jeff, uh, after your uh, knee surgery there. Uh, that brings us to, uh, Humble Haymakers. Uh, he is in, uh, Virginia. And uh, he is a hay guy. He works a regular full-time job and also does the hay. Uh, he's got some uh, John Deere equipment there and a Massey 1105 for those of you guys who are interested. Crone mower. Um, so a lot of neat equipment there and a uh, lot, lot of good videos there. Um, so that brings us to Travis, uh, Northeast Ohio farmer. Uh, check him out there on YouTube. All kinds of different videos there. Got some gator videos, some animal videos, uh, some tractor and equipment videos. Um, Monty Buzzard? Buzzard? I apologize, Monty. I'm not exactly sure how to say your last name there. He's been working on a, a tractor there in the garage, um, waiting for the next video in the series on that, Monty. And uh, the last one for today, because this video is getting really long, uh, will be Geiger Farm. Uh, and again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He is out in the Midwest. Um, I did know what state he was in, but it's slipping my mind at the moment here. Uh, but he does um, organic farming. And uh, there's a lot of great information there. Uh, if you're interested in doing organic or switching some of your 
your fields to organic farming, things like that. Uh, check out his videos, uh, ask him some questions. There's a lot, a lot of great content on there uh, about different cultivators that they use and different practices and, and how you really make uh, organic farming, you know, soybeans and different things, how you actually make that successful. Um, so I've really enjoyed his channel. I mean, I'm mostly a hay guy, but we do some vegetables and things and I've learned some things from him, uh, some tips and tricks. So make sure you check him out. So anyway, guys, I know this is a super long video. I have other shout outs that I'd like to do, but uh, the video is already long enough. Um, so be sure to check out uh, all those channels I mentioned, please. Um, they're great supporters of mine, and I'm sure they'd be great supporters of yours if uh, you went and connected with them on YouTube. So thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, hey, I hope to see you guys on the next one. Please don't forget to subscribe and the thumbs up on your way out the door, and thanks for watching.